Now, GPs, family doctors in England have voted overwhelmingly in favour of taking protest action as part of a dispute about the government's latest funding contract. And big numbers, more than 98% supported taking action which could include striking and limiting the number of patient appointments, so capping the number of people they see in one day. Now, it's a big story. It's the first time in 60 years that our GPs have chosen to take collective action. Let's find out why. Let's speak with Dr Nick Mann, who is a GP in London. Nick, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for joining us. Hello, Aisha. Uh, yeah, good to talk to you. What, have you um, voted in favour of this? If so, tell us why. Well, I completely support the GP's actions because uh, of the long-burning issues that have been sort of damaging both the, the patient experience and the ability of GPs to manage the workload, which any patient who's been to a GP recently, and that includes me in the last few months, will be acutely aware of. And the, as you said, the support for GPs is overwhelming, and that's not about. It's not about. I've heard people say it's about money. It's absolutely nothing to do with money. It's about making the system safe and implementable. And look, the the GPs are going to be given a, a range of of actions, and one of them is going to be capping the number of patients they see. You guys see in one day to to twenty five. That's about a third fewer than the normal. Is that the kind of thing that, that you would support in terms of taking action? Well, I don't think there is any action which could be considered completely trouble-free. And it's a question of, you know, what are the least damaging actions and what are the trade-offs for that? And so we don't want to see any care cut, but we need an amount of safe care. If we're talking about 15-minute appointments and 25 patients, we're still talking about six hours of uh, general practice face-to-face. -face. And that's what would be considered normal. It's certainly less than... At the I think anywhere in Europe and so it's kind of it's asking for things to be uh, it means that both GPs can do a good job for their mm. patients and patients also get a good service from from GPs. And look, Nick I mean some of my listeners will say and you know I'm just quoting what a lot of people might be thinking you know there's already so much pressure on the NHS there's all these stories about GPs getting six figure salaries why are gps doing this you know we need to see our gps the nhs is really struggling why won't anyone think of the patients i'm not really sure about the six figure salaries i mean i'm not i've been a gp now for 35 years and i'm not seeing them um there are a few gps who make a lot of money and i'm not quite sure how the so-called uh, six figure salaries are made up but you know as a general as a salaried gp in general practice for about 17 years i was on about 60000 and that didn't change much over 10 or 15 years. The system, as far as I can see, both from a GP and a patient perspective, is becoming increasingly unsafe. We've got, we seem to have fewer G, well, we have fewer GPs, there are 2,000 fewer GPs since 2015. That's full time equivalents who are fully qualified. But also, we've lost experienced GPs, and the increases have mostly been amongst new trainees. So they require bedding in, they require supervision, they're not as experienced or as effective or as productive as we would like. Final question to you, Nick, how serious are the, the GPs? We've seen the junior doctors have this quite protracted standoff with the government and, and with the new government coming in, actually the junior doctors have got a result. Will the GPs sort of look at the junior doctors and, and sort of sort of think, right, we should follow what they did, which was kind of stand your ground and then you'll get something? Well, I don't think it's a primary, primarily political action, actually. I think I'm glad in some ways that the Labour Party, West Streeting, is in charge at this point because I don't think we'd have got anywhere and I think we would have moved to industrial action eventually, um, which may have involved mass resignations. Those sorts of things were becoming tenable at that point. So I'm hoping that things can be worked out, but there are very clear things we need that Labour need to understand and that involves a kind of a reset of the profession and the professionalism and the agency with which GPs 
communities are able to manage the care which provide, which is okay. undoubtedly the most cost-effective way of providing this care to patients. It can be done and it needs to be made good, really. Okay.